time. Yeah, I think people forgot that. For me, uh, I'm not as famous as Freddie, so you know, Bima's better from Bakil. Uh, I'm not as famous as Freddie, so you know, Bima's better from Bakil. Thanks for staying back for a very interesting uh, presentation. Um, I'm taking the liberty of not introducing Atul and Narayan because I believe the introductions were given. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, Atul and Narayan are going to be talking about management information systems, which in my opinion is an extremely important part of our, our businesses. Uh, you know, not, I have heard an interesting story, Niruba Ambani, someone once asked Niruba Ambani, what management systems do you use? And he says, I don't use any MI system. And he says, a company like Reliance doesn't use an MI system? He says, I didn't say that. I said, I don't use any MI system. Says, how, do you, how do you get information? He said, I pick up the phone, talk to my department head and ask him, what was the production figure of this, this, this product? And he should know it at the tip of his fingertips. Or what was the sale, or what was the outstandings, what was the inventory? And you know, you know, and obviously, you know, everyone is a human being and you know, you can't have that information on the tip of your fingertips. But when Dhiruba Ambani, you know, spoke to his, you know, his subordinates. They had it all in their systems, and that was the, uh, you know, the Reliance MI system is so powerful that they, they have that information, and that's why, you know, that's why they are there where they are right now. And historically, you know, all we printers, we make huge investments in equipment. You know, we, you know, we buy five crore machines, six crore machines, and you know, when it comes to making investments in software, we all shy away, you know, and you know, even a 40,000 software, we would say, no, 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 I can't spend that money. And it's, it's extremely important for us to compete in the present current scenario is to have our data, you know, our data and our management systems in place. Without that, we cannot make good business decisions and, you know, in terms of costings, in inventory, you know, dispatches, you know, uh, uh, our, our, you know, the wastages, uh, uh, production workflow, uh, and all, all of this is, is extremely important. And I'm sure Atul, uh, Narayan, you know, have many solutions to offer in this, this regard, and, you know, we'd be interested to hear what they have to say. Thanks. Can you hear me in the back, please? So, as you all said, I don't need to introduce myself because most of you were there probably in the morning session. So continuing with that morning story, I think 
what we are going to discuss today, as uh, Neville said, is a pen management system, which in reality is something that all of you guys do even today. It's a more organized way of understanding your business, collecting the data about your business, and making the right decisions, which you still do. You see it, you know it you're from experience. You ask questions, and from based on that, you make certain decisions. So you do that. But this is with the size of your business going, with the number of people that may be there in your business, managing your business, not just you, like he said, Diru Vayaman, he doesn't manage it. He asks his managers. In the same way, you may have to ask your people. How do you, you need to make sure that there is a systematic way of collecting, dissemination, analysis of that information. So, once again, we're going to split the session just to, because, if, let me tell you, you will have to bear with us a little. Print management system means I'm talking about end-to-end -end of print production process and going into details of some of those things. It's not a small topic, trying to cover it in. So, we will try to cut short as fast and as quickly as we can, but just want to let you know, this is what we want to cover. And at any time you feel that there's something which is repetition, please let us know. So, why are we standing here and talking about it? What is MIS? What, how can we define a management information system? Why do you need MIS? Why should it be installed one? Why can't you continue working the way you're working now? For those of you who are not, what are the benefits? What we as EFI see where the printing industry is going. And then we'll get really in depth into the each element of our MI system. What are the key elements? Which you can constantly say as are the basic core components of an MI. What are the advanced components of and what are the, what is an advanced MI system? What's a basic MI system? How do you do integration with other um, aspects within um, print production environment? We may just skip the same part. It's how it relates to sin. And I guess that's that's it. So I start. I don't need to put this slide. So today, at this point in time, MR systems are something that are needed for you to make timely and profitable decisions based on the information that you have, based on the real-time information that you can collect. The emphasis is on real-time information. So it's not that you have three days old information based on which you could you may want to know the information as current as possible so that you are sure that your decisions are correct. So EFR uh, the slide, why I put this slide here is I want to distinguish between information intelligence versus data collection. You could have a system, and believe me, I went around seeing many of the large, well-known presses in the country, and asked them what am I system, and they were good friends, so they took around and showed me systems they've built over years. Now, they're very good systems, it worked for them, but if you really look at it, there is a difference between a data collection system and an intelligence information. You're collecting all the information, but so I know every day what was the ink consumption on this job, and I know all how much of information can I derive out of it. So it's a one other layer that you need over just a data collection system. So an MIS is not just a data collection system. Over and above that, you need to be able to derive information out of it which helps you to make business decisions because otherwise it's a lot of data yeah you have data for every day for every job that i have but what do i do with it how do i get information out of it? how do i make decisions out of it because i may collect a lot of data and it may be difficult to figure out so there is an information that you need to derive out today over 8,000 print management systems, 8,000 customers are there which deploy EFI's print management systems around the world. 
small, medium, large, gravular, flex, offset, digital, hybrid, ever. So let's get cut to the core and talk about it's very simply put. I mean, it's, there's no big uh, uh, knowledge behind it. Simply put, collect, organize, report, evaluate information. So as I said, you do this every day, day in, day out in your business. There's nothing great, but there's nothing new to it. How you do it, how well do you, that would make the difference between success or failure. So, what's the printer mass solution? It's a collection of systems and processes to manage financial, business to business transactions, business to con customer transactions, consumer transactions, administrative and production operations, and depending, which is really managing them. Now, what's the order that you would do? You will get an order from a customer. Order, you will estimate the cost. Okay, this is I need to, this is going to be my cost. You're going to give a price back to the customer, give a quote back to the customer. He'll give you a negotiate, he gives you an order. You do an order entry into your system, you take the order, you identify do you have all the inventory that is needed, all the raw material to procure, receive, pay for, manage. So you manage your inventory, so you get the material which is not there. And then you plan as to how you want to execute this job. So you manage the job, you schedule production processes, you collect data and you track whether the job is completed and that the job is being delivered as per order and you ship it. So that's, the, that's a process which is what everyone follows. The point is at each of these four points, if you are collecting the right level of information, the right amount of information, and analyzing it, it will over a period of time give you a lot of information about your business, which as a owner, as a manager running the show, this information, like someone asked that, you know, last mm, session that I have people who are semi-literate or people who are not very mm, educated in such complex systems, how would they manage? So it's not those people at the shop floor who are going to manage, so they don't need to. They need to worry about what job they are doing and input that information instead of there into a management information. It is you as the owner manager sitting back, you will get from all that data business information, not data, business information which you will extract, which will allow you to say, okay, so what's been the wastage on a certain type of a job that I did over the last What's been the trend in the paper price? That I'm, I've been buying this media for this kind of media, what's been the trend? Can I put in the extra, extra quality to see what the price is going to be for this? Like that, there could be n number of business trends that you would extract out of it, and that would that's what a management information system should give you. Why would you have to deploy one? A management information system will say, why am I in jobs running fine, I'm making money, I mean, now why do I need to really put this thing, okay? So there are a number of factors which are, are affecting a printing business today. On one side of that, you see the factors which are, the whole world is going digital, and you have digital printing, you have electronic, delivery, e-books, so you're talking about all the digital con conversion from analog to digital. That's a general trend across. So as printers, you need to be able to cater to that. On the other end side, we have the globalization. So there is no longer that I'm the biggest printer, I'm the guy who has all the infrastructure in this physical, physical geographical area, so I will be Always getting, I always get my business. No, because you're having competition because of globalization from a, someone outside, completely outside the country, or you have customers which are outside the country, like in print process outsourcing kind of a business, where you are doing some work for an overseas customer. So you are across boundaries, there is globalization, and you need to be affected by it. You need to have systems which take care of that 
and respond in that time frame for them. When it's daytime, for you it's nighttime. So you need to be available 24 by 7 for them to do business with you. Your customers may be sitting one in UK, and one in Europe, and one in Sydney, and one in Japan. That means you're working 24 hours by 7 days. So you're going to get affected by globalization. The entire internet, your customers may want you to be present on the net so that they can talk to you. You would have supply chain integration, which means you as a printer, and this is where printing business needs to be looked from. You are not a standalone entity as a printer. You are part of a supply chain. Take for example, Dell ships their computers in four days, of, they only maintain, they do a $35 million business and they only maintain a four day inventory. That's it. Okay. In four days, from order to delivery. The box and the print that has to go along with that, it all will, they would not store it for one month and then, you know, put it into the box. It all needs to happen in that four days. If you are an element of that business, you need to react in hours for them to really deliver. So, you are part, now you can consider yourself as a standalone business or you can consider yourself as an important core piece of an FMCG business. If you consider yourself as a core piece of an FMCG business, if you are not integrated into their business, and you, you become the roadblock for them, for them to move things fast. They will throw you out and ask someone else to come. So look at yourself as a core piece and which is why you need to prepare for it. You need to be ready. You need to be able to react to what your customers do. And if you have to react, your suppliers need to react to your needs in the same time frame. If you need paper, someone needs to be able to give it to you in that time frame for you to print. So. Your supply chain should be integrated into you, so is your, you are integrated into the, your customer supply chain. If you look at it from that business point of view, you need to be prepared for it. You cannot go it in the current way of operation. Competition is definitely there. If you don't do it, someone else will do it. Someone else will offer a better service at a lower cost because he is running an efficient operation and he can do the job faster at a lower cost. Naturally, he will be the preferred vendor. So all of these factors really, if you look at it, at every stage, you know, we did talk in the morning about the cost. Your cost is increasing. You have to be more efficient. Your 30 to 70 percent of your appropriate product cost is the materials and labor cost, material cost. You need to be efficient. You need to utilize your people better. All of that really forces you, whether you like it or not, it forces you to know your business better. And as I emphasized earlier, have a standard, measure it, and manage it. If you don't know it, you cannot measure it, and you cannot manage it. So what if we don't? So let me, I don't know whether people may not be able to read this, so let me kind of read it out. And I think all the points that we talked about, you will estimate inconsistently. You will estimate inconsistently, you estimate your profits incorrectly. You estimate your profits incorrectly, before long you know you are you're not making money. You will tell your customer, I am going to deliver this job, I am going to take a rush job, I am going to deliver it on this day, and on that day you wouldn't be able to deliver. Why? You didn't plan and see how your scheduling will work for. And maybe he's not your biggest customer, so you didn't care about stopping everything else for getting his job through. But then you will build up a reputation of someone whom you cannot trust on. Okay? You can. Particularly if you are in the export market, 
Yeah. The other side will not understand, your labor issues would not understand any of the other issues, why you couldn't deliver or why one machine went down or why you couldn't get the servicing in time, whatever it may. They will just say that we committed a time frame, we didn't deliver. Thank you very much. So, you need to make sure that uh, you are always aware that your supply chain is integrated, you know what, what's available, when it will be available, how fast it can be available. The better the information you have, the better you can communicate to the customer. If you can offer, you know, there are times when things uh, don't work out despite every bit of planning that you would have done. Something in your supply chain broke and it just hurt you and in turn you couldn't deliver to your customer. If you could give them a system where a customer can be somewhere else and see what's the status of my job and he knows that well in time that this is going to get delayed and there is a problem. It doesn't come to him as a shock. So you need to be on the web, you need to be able to allow him to be able to see it sitting a million miles away. So there are any number of reasons why you would, you know, you did, it, you did jobs, customer wanted alterations. Oh no, 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 we call up and change this and change that. You keep on doing this, you don't know how much you affected and what the change cost. You thought, Karnata, hey job, I have to do this job. Uh, if the change, uh, you know, if the customer wants me, I want to retain the customer, I have to do this change. Yeah, you will do that. Do you know the cost of that change? How much it did cost you? Every single time, next time did you price in your job that this customer is going to ask for changes, he's a demanding customer, I better price it accordingly. Because this is what it costs me to make those changes. So all of those are reasons why if you would not do that, you would face with these challenges. I think any number of areas you look at, whether you are estimating. So we will just pick up one or two areas for sake of argument. So if you are getting a job in and you need to give and work out an estimate of cost and then go to price, you get more accurate and consistent estimates. Last time I did this job, this is what it actually cost me. The time before that I did this job, this is what it cost me. Either have a history of those mm, information, systematically there, and with the impact of new material costs that are coming into the system. Because last time you did the job, you procured the paper at a different price. This time you are doing the job, the paper would have changed. The paper stock that you have may not be enough to cover this job and you may have a mixed cost of the older stock, older price paper and the newer price paper. All of those implications your human mind cannot calculate, but if a system is there, it would be able to give you implications of that and say, what is your possible cost and how much this particular job will cost you. Faster estimate turn around. So, I, I have an estimate that if I get a job of this kind, I just drop in, it knows all the processes that this job needs to do, that it has to go through these many mm, print stations. These, mm, this job will generally take so much time. It has so much make ready time. All that is inbuilt into the system, so it's a repeatable thing. Otherwise, you do it mentally every time. In this case, you just put it in, it works out all the component costs and gives you a tur turnaround time, which is so fast for repeatable jobs, which similar jobs that you had done before, without you having to worry that is it a correct estimate or not. Someone said, oh, we never, what are you talking about? There's no time for planning. It's like, you know, there's more jobs coming and it's like do something on a piece of, piece of paper, scribble something and that's it, that's the only time. Yeah, that's what will happen because you are having so much information to process humanly that you have no time to do anything, to really think about your business. You are in a state where you are doing things, lots of activities, but no time for planning. If all of those activities are cut short in terms of the time it takes, you have a time left to look at where your business is going, what jobs I should take because they are less profitable and more trouble, 
there are some jobs which are more profitable than less profitable. I should concentrate on building my business in that particular job rather than going and running after jobs which is more trouble and more profit. You don't have the time to analyze because you are so ingrained in, 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 with the day-to-day -day operation that you have no time for planning. I mean, this is an you know, obvious point, better cost and production control because as long as uh, you estimate cost better, you know um, uh, what your cost of doing the job is, you again work towards saying how do I lower this cost, what are the elements which constitute the cost of this print product, is there any way I can lower it. So, and if you know that it's going to go up, you are, then you know how do I ensure that my sales guys start quoting higher and not quote the same thing that we quoted three months back. Anywhere, typical labor savings will be 50%. You look at an MI system, that's the right away, the ROI that you return on investment that you get. First thing it does is just cuts down your amount of time and the amount of labor and effort that you spend on doing these things manually. That's a straight save. And then you see that your labor utilization becomes, people utilization becomes better. Because now you're planning better, and once you're planning better, your people utilization is better, your machine utilization is better. So I guess just another inventory. Improved inventory utilization. You have to, I mean, I. The, Needless to say, just in time inventory. You cannot maintain every single organization I've seen, and it's just not printing business. I can talk about every business that uh, I have seen, and I've worked in three or four different businesses. The biggest focus is how do I keep my inventory minimum? Because inventory is straight away hurts the bottom line. Hurts the bottom line, bad. People will let go of some business revenue if they can ensure that they can operate with the lower inventory. Because inventory means you're procuring and then you're building and you're keeping it there with no difference. So you have to balance between servicing an order and the material being available for you and not taking a number of days to have a lead time of many, many days. And the cost of locking your capital in inventory. For God for say, something changes in the market on that particular product or particular business, you will be stuck with inventory which you can't do much about. It's direct loss. So more control over inventory levels purchases. You are storing stuff, paper stored for long, not enough space, you put it all outside, gets moisture, gives stuff. Wastage. So you have to control. The lesser the inventory, the faster it gets utilized, the wastage will be minimal. Similarly, in the financial side, if you know, I am sure that all of you guys are good financial managers. I mean, I, I wouldn't doubt anyone in India to be not a, a good financial manager. Everyone knows what I'm going to have to collect from the other guy. But it would be good if the process is automated where you can have accounts receivable information in the how much of my money is in the outside in the market in my customers. I need to maintain that at a certain level. I cannot have keep generating jobs and doing the jobs and have lots of outstanding. So I have to constantly monitor my accounts receivable. If I know every day, okay, today 50 lakhs of my money is out in the market which I need to collect, then I know what's the fund requirements I have. So it gives you a better control over your fund flow. Because if you get suddenly a big job and you haven't got a better control of your accounts receivable, you may not be able to take the job or you may have to borrow funds from outside at 2.5% or 2% or whatever to service them. So the advantage is a better monitoring of the financial, financial aspects of your business. So this is 
how EFIC is a complete end-to-end print management system which on one side manages the print production, on the other side is the customer who may be within the same geographical location or could be a million miles away. You have an MI server which is really the nerve system, control system of your business, which then talks, you have a workflow server, so it talks to your presses, it maintains your inventory, it controls your shipping, controls your finished good inventory, it controls your machines through direct machine interfaces. It can, so all of this is an integrated system, controls your proofing and, and you know, job distribution, load distribution, so in a digital scenario, and you have an estimator which estimates based on all the jobs that are done, what the next job will cost. Your finance guy manages the accounting based on all the jobs that are in the system, and your production plant, plant manager or you are always looking at your sales guy sitting at some customer and saying, hey, we are getting this job, it needs to be done in the next three days, can we take it? This is the job. And this is the price the customer is willing to pay. You have n number of jobs running into the system. Do you want to take that job and delay all the other jobs or at that price, does it make sense or it doesn't make sense? So you have what we call is a print flow scheduling. You can see what if scenarios, I have so many jobs in the system, if I take this job, how will it impact all the other jobs in the system? I can do what if scenarios, play them and say, does it make really any sense to take this job at this price? If I'm getting a bigger margin, maybe it makes sense to upset many other customers and delay other jobs by one or two days or one or two hours or whatever. But, so I can understand and play those scenarios and based on that I can say yeah, I'm willing to take this job if we get this price and this is the commitment in terms of that I can do. This is going to impact our other customers in this manner. So all of this is completely integrated and as the owner manager you can talk to the semi server and you can sit there and monitor each aspect of that of the entire business sitting at one point. And that's what a print management system allows you to do. With all the data, and like as uh, we will say, it's this guy who will give the data to the Nero by the money, you know, or the location money, whoever it is. This guy will give the information, but all that information is at the tip of his fingertips. You ask him, you know, what is happening in the world. Who is working on it? 
maybe it's you who are doing the estimation because you want to make sure that the price is estimated properly or you have built in those standards for your key manager to estimate in behalf of you. But, so, and here you, it's your accounting person. Here, basically at this point, it is an automated feed that comes from this uh, machine into the MIS system, so there is nobody. Or in some cases, it is your shop floor data collection guy who is a metric graduate, who just has a simple screen to work on, he is working on it. So he, who is a metric graduate, doesn't need to understand this whole of the MIS system to be able to provide input. He is just entering data, pure data, which is as he does in any uh, of the presses that he is managing today. So, and here it is a salesperson. So in a sense, at every point, there are different people who are actually working in your system and MIS is collecting those information and giving you a very intelligent information back which lets you manage your business maybe physically there or being virtual, sitting in your house and be able to see all the reports. So, so the business should work with you being there or in your absence. That's how you can grow. If you are working on day-to-day -day operations, you, you are the person who have a vision. You cannot really grow your business. So, so that's what we want to get towards. So now I'll get to my nitty-gritty stuff. So what are the what are the key ingredients of an MI system? One, of course, is planning. Right? If, uh, uh, if I do a good plan, uh, I, I, can, uh, I can really execute uh, my job and make profit. So, so the three aspects are planning, production, and administration. So what am I trying to plan here? Right? I'm trying to, uh, for one thing, I want to estimate better because that's where my profit margins are. Second thing, I should be able to schedule my job better because unless I don't do a good scheduling, I cannot really uh, make use of my machineries. I could have downtime on my machineries. Third, I could be, when I am planning, I could uh, actually also plan my purchasing better so that I can manage my inventory levels. So planning alone is not good because it needs to be executed. So that's where the production part of the MIS system comes into picture. Uh, so here, it should be able to integrate directly with your machines, the presses, the devices that you have, and can collect the data and feed you an intelligent information. So naturally, that needs to be an administrative part. Fundamentally, it is your reporting, which exactly tells you what is your plant status. It exactly tells you who are your profitable customers. It exactly tells you where exactly your job is. So, so fundamentally, these are the three main ingredients of an MIS system. Naturally, they all work on people or a resource. Resource could be your inventory, resource could be your people, resource could be your machinery. They all are feeding data, which in essence helps you make the core of the MIS, which is a profitable need. So, so, so here we actually divided the whole uh, thing into what are the basic things that you should look for in an MIS system and then eventually I'll move into what are the advanced things that you should look for in your MIS system, right? So fundamentally the basic thing I need to have is that it should be able to support a hybrid printer. So today you would be able to do digital, you should be able to do offset, you should be able to do web. So it should, your MI system should, should be able to support the hybrid environment in which you are working. It should not be limited to any kind of presses. Second, it should be able to plan better. So in essence, it should be able to do my estimation in a much better way and should be able to give code in as quick manner as possible. Third, it should, uh, uh, one thing that it should have is a job ticket. We talked about a job ticket uh, in the previous session, which is a life history of the job. At any point, I should be able to look at my job and exactly tell my customer, 
to add my stack. Finally, it should be able to show you your account. So, bottom line, you know, configuration is a key element for a successful MIS implementation. So, it is very important. It is very so fundamentally how well you configure that much better an MIS system will be. And for example, in your absence to add my stack, finally it should be able to show you your account. So bottom line, you know, configuration is a key element for a successful MIS implementation. So it is very important. It is very so fundamentally how well you configure that much better an MIS system will be. And for example, in your absence, you want somebody else to take lead and be able to estimate. In that scenario, you should have configured your pricing in a much better way. <coughs> you should have configured your processes in a much better way. So configuration is a fundamental piece of the MIS system. The better configuration you do, better results you get out of it, and less headache you have later on. So what are the different configurations you're doing? You're configuring your customer accounts, you're configuring your press information, you are configuring your stocks, you are configuring what are the previous activities that you are doing, what are the charges that you want to account with it, and you are configuring your post press. So essentially you are configuring the capability of your print shop. The better you configure, the better results you get out of it. And better manpower you say you can do. So these are basically slides where it shows how I configure pricing. Uh, let it be stock, let it be press, let it be my pre press charges. So, this is basically a slide that uh, So, point of sale is a very, uh, 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 this is uh, in essence here what we mean exactly is that it should be at a single point of, single point terminal where I can pretty much manage all my transactions. So, it should be as simple as it is. Let it be my account receivables, let it be my payables, let it be the job status that my shop floor employee is entering. All should be at a very single terminal, single point where he should be able to enter this transaction. So naturally it should be at one point where one can track orders. So that's, the, that's where your customer service is. So bottom line, we talked about estimation. Estimation is very key, very important. So, so you have configured your properties very well. So what happens, what the estimation tool of an MIS system should give you is that it should be able to take in the job, the product intents that you have, should be able to map it to the processes, the operations that you want to use for manufacturing this job and be able to estimate it properly. Should be able to take in what kind of media you want, what kind of stock you are interested in, what kind of pre-press operations that I need to go through, what kind of presses I'm going to use, and what kind of post-press operations I'm going to do. So, in, so estimation is a key piece of any MIS system because that's where you're, you're going to quote a price and you're going to stick by that price and better pricing that you do more profits that you will pay. And as we go to estimation, estimation is actually a central point which is actually feeding data to your production planner to manufacture the job. At the same time, it is looking at your inventory level and trying to generate purchasing data. So, and there is one interesting concept called quick code. This quick code that your estimation system the tool should have is that you have pre-configured job, you get a lot of repeatable jobs. 
Maybe it is not the same content, but the fundamentally it is a repeatable job because it is using similar kinds of operations, similar kinds of presses. So those you can, you should be able to pre-configure it so that any of your uh, any of your employee can go and use this quick this uh, job ticket template, the job template that you have created, feed in the data and get a price. So that should be as, that should be that powerful. So quick quote is a very interesting concept that your MIS system should have. Naturally, your your MIS system you should look for is that it is at any point of view, any point of time, it is giving you a job ticket because it should it, job ticket is the one that tells you where exactly the job is, what is the life history of that job. So you should look for in your MIS system which can give you a good job ticket capability. Here, naturally, your, uh, your MIS system, you should make sure that it is able to integrate with other accounting packages. It, if it is in India, it is able to integrate with Indian accounting packages so that you know it takes care of Indian uh, accounting system. But in essence, it should also be able to give you reports on what are my account receivables, what are my payables. So, so that, that that's other than. Finally, reporting. Reporting is very key aspect because reporting lets you give control to somebody else at the same time maintain control of your print shop. At any point of time, I should be able to see what kind, what kind of work is in progress, which customer is give, making a lot of money for me, what kind of job is making money for me. So, report is very important, an intelligent report is very important. That helps you make decisions, what kind of job I should take, which customer I should go after, and exactly is my plan functioning as I want. So we will just go quickly through the advanced MIS capability. Here I will, I will predominantly talk only on the integration part of it. Basically your advanced MIS capabilities that you should look for is that it is a well integrated solution. In essence, the time I estimate it automatically, the, when the estimation is converted into a job, it automatically feeds it into your production plan. So you don't have to manually plan what kind of process I need to use. Your uh, MI system is able to plan for you. So based on the production plan, it is integrated with your job scheduler, which looks at your plan, says what kind of job you have, and tries to schedule your job. And then it looks at your inventory level and says what kind of purchase order I need to generate. So, uh, advanced MIS system is everything to do with how integrated it is with all the different operations of uh, your print shop. So, we will just quickly go into each one of them. Here, basically your estimation could be cost based or price based. Cost base is mainly ex exactly telling you what cost. So, so uh, you, you have done your job, it's a repeatable job, you exactly know what is the cost involved in manufacturing, so it should be able to let you do either cost or price base. It should be able to integrate very well with your production planner or job scheduler or a product uh, or a purchasing department. So uh, you should have control of your job at any point of time. So you should not, it should not be uh, somewhere where you missed out. So it should give you a good control of your print shop. Scheduling. Scheduling is very important. As Atul just uh, talked, uh, for, I should be able to put my job and see how this job actually impacts my other jobs. So a uh, scheduling should be very dynamic. So if I want to take a rush job, and uh, so in that scenario, if I squeeze in this job between the jobs that I have, how what kind of impact it has to the other job? 
it should be able to provide analysis to you so that you you know you should be able to you should take a rush job or you should not take a rush job so it should let you do dynamic scheduling and it should optimize itself real time shop flow data is very important because this is the one that is actually giving you real time data of your machinery feeding it into mis system so it is telling you here we have a direct machine interface which is integrated with any of your presses what it tells me is exactly what how much quantity i produce in this job what is the quantity that is left what is my wastage so there is no data entry that is involved here it is feeding into my system my system clearly now understands what was the wastage in producing that job so i can do a job costing better so i can do next time when i am doing estimation i can do pricing better and also it is also filling your inventory level it tells me my inventory level is going down so in essence i can create a dynamic i can create a purchase order sending to my purchase department and build up my inventory levels so integrated with integration with your machinery is very important that's what your advanced mis should be able to give you so this is another figure where it shows how it is integrated with your machinery and it allows you to reduce waste and improve the productivity uh inventory and purchasing are the two aspects that i uh, in essence i should be able to manage my inventory better so if it is a very very integrated plan and my your advanced mis system is able to give you a well integrated solution then it should be able to manage your inventory better let it be your fresh food inventory or let it be your stock inventory <coughs> similarly it should be able to integrate with your purchasing department and map dynamically create purchase orders and track it so that that's pretty much it along with so just to get the point home imagine if you have to enter your customer name and job description in so many areas within the plant if you don't have an integrated and you have to keep providing copying the customer name everywhere just one simple data that's the name of your customer and address it will be so many such areas that you would be entering and repeating if you don't have an integrated system so you should be able to only take it at one point and it should flow through the system so that there is no problem of wrong entry there is no problem of duplicate entry it would cut the time you would take in terms of repeating just simple job of copying and saying okay now i need to make a ticket for this guy i need to deliver it at this address so what's the customer address they write in the name and address of the customer so this is just a small example to show that how an integrated mis system it's one data element that we are talking about there can be thousands of such things that the system will handle and it will allow you to capture information at one point percolate to the rest of the system and it would in turn reduce the amount of time your people would spend in doing those each of those tasks so i guess uh, needless to uh, repeat it again okay? you are integrating every business function to eliminate duplicate effort and data errors as i said a data collection system in the big way versus intelligence into in a data collection system you will be collecting the data at multiple points here what you are doing is you are really taking the data and you are putting a layer of which analyzes that information and integrates into the next real time into the next set of operations that you may need to do or the decisions you may need to take it speeds up your internal communication it speeds up your order and order entry production billing and brings you back to what we saw in the morning a computer integrated manufacturing with genius standard
So when we talk about the job ticket in here, the job ticket could be a JDS standard job ticket. The each element in a MIS system could have the job information flowing in a standard JDS job ticket. So that if a prepress software is talking to that MIS system, it can exchange and talk information through the JDF message format. So that it can feed information into the MIS system, it can extract information out of the MIS system. And that way you can automate not just your data collection, but the MIS system driving the other devices and driving the other <coughs> softwares as well. And that's why uh, our MIS system, which is JDF enabled. So just to take an example, you have a web submission like someone asked, I did very asked that in the last session that I will have information coming from my advertising agency. It comes into a web submission software. That's a for the MIS system, it's a software which is outside the MIS system. However, that system formats the information about customer intent, what the job customer wants and what he wants to be done. That JDF information is then passed on to the MIS system which then analyzes and says, now I understand this, 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 this customer wants. So I need to make sure that in inventory, do I have the inventory for doing this. First of all, I look at the job um, ticket and know what are the processes on this job that I need to do. What is the material that I need? Do I have the material in the inventory? Is the stations available for me to run this job? When this, it can drive the whole thing directly without you having to intervene, if you want it that way. Or you can always have an approval stage in where you can ask it to stop and approve so that you are more, you want to make sure that you know what's going on and it's not just happening. Once you are, once you do it once and twice and you know this thing works, then you can let it run on its own. So that's how the JDF integrates into an MI system like any other system. So an MI system would then talk to all the pieces in the puzzle, which are your machines, your devices, your and collect information or provide information. So the extending it a little further, as I said in the earlier part of the lecture, that you are not just alone, you are not an independent entity. You are part of someone else's supply chain and your suppliers are part of your supply chain. So this is what I'm talking about when, you know, on one side you have, it is your supply chain, on the other side it's a customer supply chain which you are part of. So right from customer systems to your systems to your supplier systems, if you are integrated then that's the best possible way. So that your management information system can take information from the customer system and in turn whatever it needs can ask, pass on to your supplier system which can then provide you that you know, material in time for you to take it, process the job and supply the material back to your customer. So if you can get to that stage, so there are two stages, one is integration within your spread shop other is integration outside your print shop. So you should look at both. You may not want to attempt everything at the same time. You may want to do it in steps, but you may need to look at the whole picture then just within your print shop. So I guess I will need to previously stop, you know, timely accurate information is the key. As I said to you earlier, the communication and accurate timely information is the key to an MI system. As long as you can make sure that you're getting timely accurate information at the right time to the right people, the decisions that will be made will be good for the business. Thank you.
and had our printers, had an MIS system, you know, they would be more in the audience. They've obviously gone back to their print shops to manage their businesses. So, uh, we should have, we should have taken your advice much earlier. Um, just to start off the question answer session, I had, uh, you know, I wanted to jump the queue, and uh, I had a couple of questions. One is, how different is a print MIS system from, you know, SAP or Navision or, you know, NetSuite or, you know, would, would it, you know, could you implement, say, a SAP to a print environment? That is one. Secondly is, you know, uh, you know, I'm not even going into the cost part of it, but, you know, even to implement, a, you know, a MIS ERP solution, the whole implementation is so, so tedious and so, you know, just to get the implementation going. And can you do it in stages? Is that something which you recommend? And third is, you know, most of us and, you know, most of our chartered accounting, uh, you, know, our, you know, our auditors and, you know, our accounting uh, professionals are so used to a, 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 a software package called Dally, which is, you know, which is, you know, so widely used. And would, can Dally or a software, a very specific Indian, you know, uh, popular software be integrated to uh, a system like this? So I guess your first uh, question was regarding uh, SAP for Navigation. SAP and Navigation. Okay. So I would say that our SAP is also an enterprise resource planning system. And uh, yes, it's like putting uh, in to in the Square product, if we try to put it into a uh, of uh, round cartoon, then you are fitting it somehow, but the fit is not accurate. So you, you can do a SAP implementation, but it is not designed for a print industry. It's designed more for a manufacturing industry. What print management systems do is they customize the entire new system for a printing industry. And printing industry, when you specify, for example, a job, you have an N number of things that you want to specify about the job, which the system will give you, and it's easy for someone who's looking at to say, okay, this is what the job is going to and I can just print it. There you will have to get each of those things customized for you. And I don't know if you have ever seen a SAP implementation, customization in SAP can be pretty expensive yeah, exactly. and time consuming. So that is why print management systems do exist for print shops and which are tailor-made to a print shop's operation. <coughs> as far as uh, the second question, part of the question was, is in terms of how difficult can you stage it in terms of implementation? How difficult it is? So then, I would give, draw your um, uh, attention to the 1980s when a lot, many manufacturing organizations in the country tried to deploy SAP and they were not very successful. However, in the last few years, a lot of organizations went back and they deployed SAP and now they are successful. Why? So it's important, one, when you deploy the print management system, you need to ensure that it's not a software that you put one box and start and do it. It means you have to review every single process that you do and every operation that you do in your print shop. You need to streamline your operations. It's not done on because Bimal said it, so it has to be done. It has to have a logic behind it. It has to be a process behind it. Once you streamline an operation, you would be able to deploy a management information system better. There are two ways of addressing it. Generally, people will deploy it in phases and then refine it to give more and more and more. It may be better from a printing industry in India's perspective to take another approach and that is to deploy a small basic core system to start with, get the core things getting right in terms of not worrying about all the other um, things 
things in terms of you know print flow and scheduling fast, but get the basic core of the business running fine. Get your hands, get your understanding of how my systems work, what I want, what I don't want, and then go for a more customized solution which allows you to suit it better because now you have understood the implications of it and the areas that you want to do first and the areas that you don't want to do at all in the areas you want to do last. So yes, it would allow you to, that would be a better because that's a, where you get a real feel of the benefits instead of trying to, you know, do a big implementation and hoping that I'll save a few lakhs of course of rupees and then figuring out and arm down the drain in terms of the and not being there. Third is, there are some non-technical um, human factors attached to a MIS department, which is, the moment information is available, people in your organization shouldn't feel threatened about it. Now you can see your fingertips, what's the performance of each of your employees. You can see on the fingertips everything. The, earlier it was, oh, I have done a good job. Today you can measure and monitor, and the moment he knows that you can measure and monitor, he feels better. So there are those issues that you need to also handle. So how you implement it, if you do the implementation in too fast a state, you may come up with those kind of issues more. And it's better to introduce one at a time, two, one system phase at a time, than opposite. Good question. So, every country has their own taxation laws which keep changing with every like in India budget. And you know, no, no, possibly no system can keep track of it every year with the changed um, uh, invoicing conditions, changed uh, taxation laws. So, typically what you do is, whether it is a city, whether it is in, in, uh, any other system, you always integrate and a certain level and you can integrate any accounting system because an accounting system at the end of the day needs the basic transactions and if you can get those basic transactions extracted out of your MI system and imported into the target then transition so you would typically you do integrate most MI systems don't try to do the whole accounting part of it because it will be different in different countries Question. Any other question? Yes. Yes. Uh, EFI supply these uh, uh, MI systems. Okay. So there are four products. I, I told talked to you about there are eight thousand installations worldwide of these MI systems for you. Starts from the absolutely low end basic system, which is what we call as a Princeman. You can actually, if anyone's interested, someone can take down the name. We can send you a. The evaluation system you can actually try out and feed in your data and see how you feel about it. Then, which is a basic system to start with. Then we go to a system what we call as logic or uh, next system is called PSI which is for I would say small medium printers. Then we go to the next level which is called logic which is for large print shops, large printer organizations, but with single unit. And then you go to Hagen, which is almost, you can, you can have, the largest of printers can deploy it around the world. We may have different units, different presses, distributed in multiple countries, multiple currency. So EFR has four layers of systems, from the smallest of the printer to the largest in the world. And you have all of these uh, deployments out there. I don't know if any of you saw the uh, news where the RR Dunnelly EFR deployed a production plant system for RR Dunnelly and there are 12 um, different uh, uh, plants around the world. So you can go to really, um, uh, really in-depth systems which can do everything that we talked about from dynamic scheduling of jobs automatically and everything. But I think in the Indian context, most of the customers would be probably start with Princeton and go up to Logic. Yeah. Uh, the, the person with the mic first. Okay. 
right before, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I want equipment to communicate with each other. They essentially need to be CIB4 and uh, JDF compatible. Uh, so, looking at it from an Indian scenario, not all equipment that a printer may possess may be CIB4 compatible. So, in such a case, how do you justify the proposition that a printer should either you know, only automate half of this unit with the MIS. This is the integration of the equipment to give me live data, data regarding the base stage and you know, all these different things. So how do you actually justify that, that proposition that a printer should only go for half or a part MIS? We never said that you have to, if you see, we talked about the basic system where there was absolutely no uh, machine interface at all, absolutely. You're talking of your core of your business, you're not even talking about integration of machines. As in, as in when the new products come out and you're buying, keep making sure that they are JDF compatible so that at some point in time, piece by piece, your systems start integrating. To start with, you may not be able to do that, you're right. You do have pieces available from EFI, for example, AutoCount is a direct machine interface available from EFI. We today support whether it's a Mitsubishi machine, whether it's a Kumori machine, there are different number of machines. They all can, data can be attached to and you can take all the machine data directly into an MI system. No JDF required there because it's a sensor-based hardware which fits onto your machine and extracts all the information out of your print machines into your MI system. So you can still do that. Over a period of time, all of them should be communicating it. So JDF is something, as I said, is something that you, from now onwards, do look out and say, I am buying anything, I need to make sure what's the JDF stamp, is it a JDF compatible thing or not. So that over a period of time, there have enough pieces within your plan which are JDF compatible and you start connecting them. Okay, so all these systems are modular. Uh, you can purchase them in different Yes, you can purchase an MIS system, you can purchase a direct machine interface auto count separately, you could purchase print flow scheduling, but certain systems do need the base MIS system as a platform. Certain systems can operate without the base MIS system as a platform. So that's a combination. It is not something that you would choose. Typically when we do an MIS engagement, first thing we do is we spend two to three days studying your entire plan, and spending time with you to understand how your operations are, what does, and then come up with some kind of a configuration which would satisfy your needs. So it is not an off the shelf that you buy and just put it and start running. It doesn't work like that. Right, thanks. We have just one last question. Yeah. Would you also have uh, estimation for labels in your form? Sorry? Estimation. For sheet pen. Yeah, yeah, for sheet pen. Right. For labels in the form. Yeah, yeah. See, the, uh, the idea is that when you are going in for a tool like this, it does not matter. It does not matter if, if it's a web offset or it's a sheet pen or it's a digital printer. At the end of the day, it is printing and we can handle all the printing right from a uh, sheet fed A3 size printer going right up to a web. 28 by 40 size printer. Doesn't matter. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, this is uh, because uh, I'd like to. Uh, thank you, Atul, uh, for uh, a wonderful, uh, wonderful morning and evening uh, session. Uh, it was both very interesting. <laughs>